This is Pimelia spinescens, or the spiny rice flower. Occurring on the volcanic plains of Greater Melbourne, this vulnerable species has been moved more for developments in the past 23 years than any other species we know of. So you would think, after all this time, successfully relocating plants so that they survive and recruit would be a refined art. But as this story will show, success doesn't come easily and someone needs to be checking. Rather than what was normal for the day was once uh, an area was designated for development, the environment just got bulldozed. And we just come up with the idea of, well, how about we pick these things up and move them into the reserves. When we found a tree spade, which basically hydraulically pushes spades into the ground and pulls out a cone of soil, and you do that in the place where you want to put the plant, and then you throw that lump of dirt away, and then you get your plant, and then you plonk it into that hole, and then give it heaps of water. The salvage method Steve developed has become an industry standard. The issue is, no one knew how many translocations there had been, and if they even worked. Picking up a plant and moving it from one place to another is one thing. It's trying to put it into a, an environment which you then manage as a natural environment and try to get a population established. According to Australian law, developers could relocate a plant in the way of a development and were only required to maintain, monitor and report on its survival for the life of the project, historically two years. In the context of a more than 50 year lived species, two years is not enough. These short time frames meant that opportunities to learn and improve methods were limited. But luckily for Pimelia, someone else was working on this species. I planted that plant. That is a translocated plant that I grew from seed and it is alive. Oh, I, I thought it was dead actually. Oh, that is so exciting. I started working on this species when I started my PhD, but I certainly met this species, I think, when I moved into the area. And I went for a walk and I found the species. I found a book, found out what it was, it was an endangered species. And I decided to go back to uni and study um, the environmental science. <laughs> Steve and Debbie are both part of a recovery team for this species, a group that advises on how best to conserve it. But without species knowledge, advice is hard to give. Babies! <laughs> Debbie's research about its ecology has been crucial for understanding how to propagate this species, enabling the replacement of individuals lost through development. She was also the first person to successfully grow it from seed and has been perfecting the method for over a decade. This is um, seed that I've collected since 2009 probably and we're still reusing it to grow plants for people now. But that wasn't the only thing Debbie and the team found out. The two-year monitoring reports we talked about earlier were often private and notoriously difficult to track down. This limited opportunities to learn what worked and what didn't. Um, a lot of the reports are written for developers, so they're owned by developers, but I think there should be perhaps more public documents about what's going on. Lack of transparency is a problem in many mitigation translocations, but in this case, the team decided to do something about it they have stipulated that 50% of plants must survive. And if they don't, they need to be replaced. We put in the management plans in that once they grow, go below that, they have to replace them. They have also stipulated that reports, including successes and failures, should be sent to them so that everyone can learn what has and hasn't worked. And they have set a minimum management and reporting period of 10 years. One of the projects that requires these rules to be in place is managed by Brimbank City Council. So we're at Pioneer Park grassland in uh, Sydenham. So this section in particular is quite a 
good C3 dominated section of grassland, of which we don't have that much in our reserve. So a few different species that we'll find in here. Um, so Ostrostipa bigeniculata, Ostrostipa curtacoma, and also some Ostrostipa gibbosa in here. More importantly in here, we've got translocated Pimelia spinescence. They are surviving currently at about 38% of what went in. Because the translocation has fallen below 50% survival, we basically want to put more genetics in and more individuals in and keep those numbers up and hopefully get them to pollinate. The other thing Brimbank has done, which is critical to the recruitment of Pimelia spinescens and the health of the grassland as a whole, is reintroduce a two to three year fire program. This is the plant recovering after its burn three weeks ago at least now. And see all the new growth on it. So we, they need fire to be healthy and to promote um, germination of seed and to open up spaces. It's, it's vitally important. Once you get to the stage of having a frequently burnt grassland, trickling is a really good way of describing the fire behaviour. So yeah, it just trickles and you, you don't really put any heat into it and it just kind of yeah, meanders along. With developments only set to increase around Australia, mitigation translocations will become more frequent. But the vast majority of mitigation translocations still only require monitoring for the life of the project, and sometimes less, which is not enough. The Pimelia spinescens story represents one of the best examples of mitigation in the country. You think global at local. You have to look after what's right under your feet. It's so important. We're learning things that otherwise we would never have learnt. Even the Commonwealth have looked at us as a potential model for setting up recovery teams. And it is still far from perfect. There's three plants left here um, that we know are one there and a couple, two over there. And that's it in this whole reserve. Well, what are we now? We're 20 years after the fact. And about half of the plants are still alive. I suppose these salvage translocations are as much about learning about the species and learning about the environment that they live in so that you can make better decisions later on. Maybe the future of conservation, particularly in urban areas, will have to rely on more collaboration with developers, showing people what a well-integrated urban natural landscape could look like. But currently, we are a long way from that reality.